Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Guy Gyerson. Uh Earl was doing a Fez impression in the back. <laughs> All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. It is the Ron and Fez show. Let's get the board gossip going. <laughs> Razzle Dazzle, it's Board Gossip with Eastside Dave. A little gossip, a little gossip, a little It's Board Gossip time, starting off with ronfez.net. Bobby Pantera asks, is there Bobby a... Pantera? Bobby Pantera! Ron How old is this post? Oh, Ron, it's... Two months old, minimum. Yeah. Anyway, Ron, is there a place to eat but hate the owners? Do you have a place in your neighborhood which you love to eat, but you just can't stand who runs the joint? I would say Pitsy's in-laws. That, to me, <laughs> good food, uh, bad ownership. I have a place stands by my uh, apartment that they... They, they, they get mad at you if you order stuff for them. Earl, come on in here. Are you going to squeeze some out on the air or just going to be off the air? I'm all right. Come on. I'm okay. What happened, buddy? I just have no control anymore. What's bothering you? <laughs> just trying to get myself together. Because of the sleep? <laughs> yes. Is it the sleep or me? It's the sleep. I'm not asleep. I'm not asleep. And it's driving me crazy. The one thing you want to do, the one thing that, that ends your day, you can't, I can't do it. It's just, my nerves are shot. I, I'm trying. I'm really trying. Do you know somebody else does this act, right? We can't everybody doing the same character. I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to show this. You want to join in with him, Fez? We'll get the fucking Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> crying started. I feel like I should sue him. But it's just, I'm just not at peace right now, and I'm not. I'm just, just wouldn't do anything just to sleep at peace. Yeah, but you're not going to sleep at fucking noon. I'm not. I, I'm not saying that sleeping new. Like when I go to bed at night, and, and I've I've done everything. I've gone to bed earlier. I've I've done everything but medication, and it doesn't work. And I don't want to go on medication. It doesn't work for me. He was sobbing away back there during Guy Garrison. I mean, a full fucking till cry. Robin three we had to hug him. Like it was a fucking. I felt like somehow I ended up in the girls' locker room. <laughs> Anything, Guy Garson. And you know, like, I think, like, they go back and smoke out the window like an animal. Yeah. Everybody's going to come in there. So I'm yeah. hearing Guy Garson. I go, well, who's running the other board? Pitsy. I go, so you're completely out of the lineup now. <laughs> he tried to fucking lean on me. I'm like, dude, I can't fucking have people laying on me crying. So Robin Three played the part of, you know, um, designated. That's what we need somebody in here to hug the criers. <laughs> You feel better now? If you squirted a couple out? No. Just want to. You want to change your tampony? I don't wear a tampon, would not. Maybe that's your problem. Prove it. What do you go old school? I don't go any school. I don't wear a tampon. He wears a long string. Just the string. <laughs> You right now? Yeah, I'm all right. You want to do a couple more? I'm, all, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, what other board gossips we got? From ronfez.net, a certain booster asks, What old school rap, if any, still holds up? Does old school rap even hold up as well as old school rock and roll? I gotta go bust the move. Uh, I think if you're gonna go back. No, I don't think the old school rap holds up. You wanna get in on this, X? Uh, I disagree, Mr. B. I think not only does it hold up, I actually like, for instance, Run DMC. 
I like them more than tr- modern. Tr- tr- tricky. Hey, man, that had some rhythm, and they're not always oh. rapping about the bling and this and, and the chicks and they everything. They fucking started it with the tougher than leather and what they have. What uh, That's bullshit. But the only- I think it all. Uh, all right, I will say this. That whole mama gonna knock you out bit by LL. Yeah. <laughs> by the ladies love Cool J. Uh, what about feeling? I think it's all novelty stuff from back then. I mean, besides. And, 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 you know what? That's a very good point. That shit all sounded like the streak. <laughs> it's a novelty. It's a novelty song. I don't think so. I think it, it's it's more akin to like a Chuck Berry riff. It, it was old school. It was simple. But hey, at least you can understand what those old school rap guys are saying. You can understand you, what they're saying now. No, you, 50 Cent with the. He talks. Yeah, you can understand why do you what he's want saying. to sound like an old fucking lady. You either want to be a little child or an old lady. These kids today, I can't understand them. <laughs> I have no idea what 50 Cent is talking about. You, don't, you, you can't understand most of these guys. But pussy and money, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Stinking is not the same as, but does it hold up? I'll fucking say this. For me, I can still listen to the Public Enemy stuff, the NWA, NWA stuff. But again, that might have have more to do with where you were in your life. I will fucking listen to The Chronic. I'm not going to lie to you about that. <laughs> but, I, I, but there will never be a classic hip-hop station the way there's oldie stations and, and classic rock stations. It's not going to happen. I think that would do very well. I think it would do extraordinarily well because people, I mean, hip-hop's over 30 years old now. Right. But who wants to hear it? Yeah, but 10 years of it weren't really listenable now. Like, it, hip-hop hit stride probably in the early 90s, between 92 and 97. It was probably the best. You're going to tell me the, the, the message doesn't hold up? Well, that's one song out of how many yeah. albums? I just said Run artists. DMC. I, I, I don't Tribe I don't called Quest, up. you would say, in old school Beastie Boys are definitely old school. And it's still great. No Sleep Till Brooklyn is awesome. Do you really want to fucking hear a whole station of that, though? <laughs> Do we have a classic fucking thing on, on XM? Do we have classic hip-hop? Um, no. no, we don't. And, I mean, we have a, uh, a fucking station devoted to movie scores. So it's not like we won't go for a small piece of pie here. Right. And I can't imagine. I, I'm sure it will happen, but it's going to stink. I mean, I think it might take a little time, but I no, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to make people realize that old school rap was better. And I'm going to tell you something. Did you see the last um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction when the Furious Five was out there? And this is like what lie? They look so fucking ridiculous. Did you see it, Earl? Yes, I did. Did it look ridiculous? It was. I mean, it, time has not been kind to them, and it didn't have that same. Bounce and energy that it did back in seventy eight or seventy nine. It was ridiculous. It was the dumbest thing I ever saw. I really do think though, when you think something holds up, most of the time, mm-hmm. it has to do with your own personal place, your own personal memories of where you were at. You know. Yeah, I, I see your point to that, but I think enough people had such fond memory of that that eighties and early nineties rap. That there still is a big, huge place for it. I think a lot of people still prefer. I need, I know I do. A lot of people did not prefer early '80s rap. A lot of people prefer like the first Biggie album, the first Wu Tang album, all that stuff. Absolutely, I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with that. Well, that's people, people will prefer. go back and listen to that. But I don't think there's people are sitting around at night <laughs> fucking listening to those two fat guys fucking. <laughs> fat boys, yeah. The fat boys I, are great. I, I, I don't think anybody's listening to them. <laughs> Listen. Are what, they dead? No. Two of the three of them, are dead. Oh, yeah, two. two of the three. <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> two, they died from heart-related problems. Oh, that's a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. I thought the fat boy was good. Oh, okay. Then you turned me around. <laughs> <laughs> From FBA, TNA Buffalo asks, what are some words or phrases that men should never use? All right, this is a good one. I don't like to hear a man say the word exfoliate. It just drives me nuts. <laughs> Even if you do it, you shouldn't be talking about it. You hear this uh, a lot lately, especially through Project Runway and heterosexual men watching that show, and you hear people, men saying, fierce. And I'm sorry, a real man does not say, hey, did you see Eli uh, Manning the other Sunday? Shit, he was fierce against the Eagles. No real man says that. I've only heard gay guys use that as an adjective for something good. I, no, that's, uh, that's, that's me, personally. I don't know. Yeah. It's becoming mainstream, dude. 
dude. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe we could add dude to that. <laughs> it is. I hear it. Slacks. A man can't say slacks. Even if they are men's slacks, they're pants. You can't say slacks. I also think underpants is a little... I hate the term underpants. It's just a little non I, I, I hate the term underpants. Yeah, so I'm I just don't. going with boxers, you know? <laughs> that sounds like a sport, at yeah. least. Briefs even sounds bad. Like, all underwear should just be oh, called I boxers. Mean, I forgot to tell you this. When uh, Earl was crying, uh, Robin Three was holding him. And then he took out his handkerchief, right, and started dabbing at himself, and he looked like Satchmo. Look, he's got it right there. You really did. It looked like Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and, and I think to myself, I'm sorry for myself. <laughs> you want to jump in there, Earl? Go ahead. Jump back in oh, your old shit. fucking place. Go ahead, big girl. You're doing it. Let's see. <laughs> Razzle Dazzle. It's bored gossip. The with bed. Side Just Dave. the bed. Oh, uh, here comes the tears. He didn't hit the bed. From RonFaze.net. Pat's Opinion asks, What sports record won't ever be broken? Why are so many records being broken this year? Uh, here's one that will never be broken. Babe Ruth's white man's uh, home run record. <laughs> the white man home run record will stand time. Yes, I think so. Because yeah. even if A-Rod surpasses. Uh, throw in Marciano's white man heavyweight champion's <laughs> record. I think Cal Ripken's record is not going to be broken. To me, that's not even a record. What do you mean? It's attendance. It fucking means nothing. <laughs> It's the stupidest thing ever. Wilt's 100 points in a game. That'll never be broken. I don't know. Kobe came, what, 89? I thought it was 81. 81? I thought it was, yeah. So, And if if, Kobe, if the team really sucks like this year, mm -hmm. I could see Kobe just going just off. Just starting to light it? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. I am not passing the ball anymore. There's a possibility that that record could go. If someone could just hit trace, if someone has got a game where they're going to hit 20, 25 trays and they're leaving them open... It's I, over. It makes you appreciate Wilt's record that much more. He had no threes, and he sucked at free throws. So how do you score? <laughs> because the other center was 5'8 <laughs> and white. Earl, what's the record for you? Uh, Ted Williams, 406. I think that'll be broken. That's a stat, though. Yeah, well, I don't even well, think it's a record. Well, I think hitting 400 will be... Yeah, that's not a record. And that and uh, DiMaggio, because the pressure is on at 25. They put they, they, You become a national... They they cut away to uh, ESPN and all these other things. When you hit like 25, 26, 28, imagine when you hit 40, 41, 42. The pressure's enormous. Here's our buddy Jay Moore. Jay. Hi, boys. Johnny hey. Vandermeer's consecutive no hitters. To hit, you'd have to pitch three straight no hitters. That was never going down. Never going to happen. Uh, no. Not in today's offensive climate, no. no. I, I agree with that. You can't even pitch one no hitter in your career. You're a big shot if you get. It's always like a fluke. <laughs> the dirt bags, the 500 guys like David Wells and Kevin Gross, guys pitching no hitters. But to pitch three consecutive no hitters, that's for the birds. Come on. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It was never going to happen. And Ron, I've been. I like what you guys. You never words that you don't really say. You shouldn't be able to say in public. Yeah. I, I've, I've made my own list of words that you'll never hear a black man say. All right, let's hear that. Trick. <laughs> You never say prick, do you, Earl? No, I never say prick. Yeah. You'll never hear a black guy go, man, I'll tell you right now, that motherfucker's a prick. <laughs> you know what? It's true. I mean, and, and it's true. Uh, they won't call anyone a jack-off. That never happens. Yeah. Douchebag. Never hear douchebag out of them. Oh, that was my next one, Earl, you fucking thief. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'll tell you one motherfucking thing. He's a douchebag. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Also, tip. Tip you never hear. Yeah. <laughs> As in, here's your tip. We tip. No, you don't. Mm -mm. No, no, you don't. No, not, I didn't say well, but we tip. Girl. Change. Earl, you still hear a black man's fucking tip hit the f uh, table. Whenever we go to the diner, I know I do. And one time, Ron left too big of a tip, and so Earl went back and took a couple of the singles off the table. You fucking it. kidding me, Earl? And, no, and I never don't ever go fucking... Table. You light-fingered son of a bitch... Lightfinger Crybaby, that's your new name. <laughs> you, know why, you know why Eastside Dave always tips 30%? Because he's all class. 
That's yeah, right, Mr. Moore. Class personified from New Jersey, Mr. Hollywood. He fucking tips 30% because he's too drunk to keep his money in his pocket. <laughs> that too. <laughs> You know, when you're, when you're with a bunch of drunk people, you can really make money on the tip. You just go, come on, everyone put in dollars And then you put $10 in your pocket and you tip eight. <laughs> <laughs> it, all, it works really good in taxi cabs when everyone's hammered. And you go, come on, I need 11 bucks off of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got the one black friend like, I ain't giving you nothing, you fucking prick. That's another thing. Earl's never been in a cab. <laughs> He's tried. They won't let him in. They're great. Unless he was driving it. Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna tell, and this is an honest to God shoot. When we used to leave uh, late at night, we used to have to fucking tell Earl stand back a few feet, don't stand next to me, because those motherfuckers would not stop a cab before Earl was standing with me. Really? And that's bullshit. I mean, I'm talking this fucking decade that happened, and it used to happen all the fucking time. And I'm talking about twelve, uh, one o'clock at night. Well, they'll jump, drive up on the fucking sidewalk looking for you. They would keep going if they saw Earl. <laughs> I've seen them slow down and then hit the gas. And I'm not. This isn't white people doing this. This is people who have been off the fucking boat for six weeks. Look up and go. Oh, the black guy'll sniff me. They learn <laughs> that quickly. <laughs> Yeah, that was how, about when they make, I, Earl, how about when they make you pay in advance? Like, if you were going to mug them, you couldn't just take your advance back? <laughs> I've had guys ask me how much money do I have. They, they said, you know this ride's going to cost 12 And I'm like, who cares? I got 20 so what? Give me, put me in. Way to throw out the big number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a $20 bill right here. And it's all from Ron Pennington's tip. That motherfucker will take a train anywhere, a $2 train. He don't give a shit where he's going. Put him on the train. Hey, Ron, you ever gone to hail a cab in Midtown and you realize you've started a fucking relay race between four cabs? Oh, you know, it it can get fucking ridiculous. You know, the the pricks don't want to pick you up at 5 o'clock, but if you're walking down the street at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're not even looking at the road and they'll stop and try to get you. Mm -hmm. Get in. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Where were you at 5 when I needed your ass? <laughs> yeah, I... It's amazing that they change shifts at rush hour. That boggles my mind. It's the most, it's the craziest shit in the world. They decide, let's flip this thing over at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Ronnie, do you think Ricky Hatton has a chance against Floyd Mayweather? Uh, no, I'm not buying can into ask, it. Can we, can we ask Guy Gardner about that? Floyd Mayweather is going down on Saturday. Very boring fighter for my tastes. All clinical, no rat pizzazz. He will be knocked out by the 12th. How many brain cells does Ricky Hatton have left, though? <laughs> I mean, I he's know. stupider every time I see him. But uh, why do people like Floyd Mayweather? He is boring as sin. I don't he's understand flashy. it. He's not flashy. That's just, just the Hatton, opposite. When Ricky Hatton puts on those glasses, he looks like Bjork and Dancer in the Dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not exciting, though, Jay. I still got it. What? He's not exciting, though, is he? Do you think Floyd Mayweather is exciting? Well, it's funny if you read my article on Fox uh, about Riff now. He's surrounded by homeless. <laughs> have you heard Roy, Roger Mayweather talk? He's like an actual fucking homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I have. That's his <laughs> uncle, right? Yeah. 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 You know what? Now I will promote it. Go read my Floyd Way Mayweather article, Ron. You'll like it. And this is at FoxSports.com. Yeah, it's an act. It's like you know, this guy's the greatest fighter in spite of his father's got hair like fucking Predator. And his uncle is, like, in the sh supermarket for Thanksgiving buying chips and Gatorade. Like, <laughs> he's like, why does Floyd still fight? He goes, why the fuck you think Bill Gates still making all them fucking computers? <laughs> like, wow, what a salient point, Roger. <laughs> and why is the fucking six-time world champion training at 24-hour fitness? That's where I train. I should have a fucking elliptical machine next to a guy that's better than Ali. <laughs> 24 hour fitness is where the fucking Armenians work out. It shouldn't be where the six time world champion is doing this. Well, he isn't, uh, you know, things have changed in the boxing world. The money is not being thrown around the way it used to be. It's very unless hard for a boxer to ever retire with any bread at all. Unless you fight Oscar De La Hoya and then let him promote your next fight. Yeah. Oscar <laughs> is one of the few names left. Oscar never won a mega fight. He's 0 5. But you Oscar know, there, beat anybody. there are so many guys with belts now that could walk through the mall without anybody recognizing <laughs> them. And that used to be I impossible. Have, yeah. I have a belt. Well, you need one. Thank you, Jay. 
God bless you, boys. All right, bye. There's... And a douchebag, girl. All right, there's Jay Moore. <laughs> FoxSports.com slash blogs slash Jay Moore uh, slash comedy. That's how to watch. Just go to FoxSports.com. Everybody's got a blog now. I got to get a blog going. I just recently found my blog that I had that I haven't um, done in two years. I didn't even know you had one. Yeah, ever. I used to have a blog. It's horrible, as you would probably expect. Like Guy Guyers in bed. Guy Guyers in bed. No, 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 no. Then it would be brilliant. But uh, my blog ends with. I think I might get a, a job that I really need. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll keep you uh, tuned. And that was the last time I ever wrote well, in my fuck blog. Fuck you, readers. <laughs> How many readers did you have? I had like two or three. <laughs> no one can ever keep up with their blogs. It's too exhausting. Yeah, it really is. It's That's exhausting. Why Kathleen's amazing. Yeah. Because it takes a long time. And, and well, I told her before, don't try to do the five-day thing. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. At one point, one of my blog entries was me posting pictures of old school cereal boxes because I just had nothing to write about. You ripped off Blowhard's blog. Remember, he he's done like eight of those. He where does. I was like, here's toys that were great that I grew up with. <laughs> I think oh, I here's a, oh, here's shrimp. Here's a picture of shrimp. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. You, you run out of stuff. You can't sit there writing every day. Or maybe you need, need to start blogging. Today I cried. <laughs> I don't think it's... Squirt out a couple more. I want to squirt out a couple more. I, I, I think I'm all squirted out. I, I mean, wow, I, I can't remember the last time I cried that much. I think of a funeral, maybe. I don't know. I can't even... There. No, I noticed this. You and Fez never cry outside yourselves. It's only for your own problems. It's not like something that... You, just... you have zero capacity to care about the outside world. What you were crying for is because you don't want to work, period. I, I, you know, there's a lot of things I care about. I mean, there's things that... You don't cry about those, though. I mean, I, I, mean, I cried when, you know, when my, you know, obviously when my grandmother died and when... You know, I, because that was yours. When people close to me died. Yes, that's about you. That's about you, and I'm not going to see my grandmother. Boom. The tears start. <laughs> From Whack Bag, Green Snacks asks, with the holiday season coming up, what is the stupidest holiday gift? I, I honestly think if you try to give a man clothing, if you try to give him a sweater or a fucking shirt, it's wasted. Don't ever give people dishes or bowls. I don't care if they're a woman, a man, anything. I don't think of if, if there's any item that's less personal and less necessary than bowls or plates. And my parents give that to me all the time. Well, they've been to your house. They know that you're fucking eating <laughs> cereal out of your hand. He eats dry cereal and then pours milk in his mouth, and that's his way of dealing. I got four plates and four bowls, and I'm happy that way. I don't need any more. I don't need the whole place to be cluttered. I like to have room in my That apartment. forces you to actually wash. It's true. It you know, because if you don't, if, you'll fucking just keep right on going. I'm trying to get to the point where I have a friend, HP, who had one fork, one knife, one plate, and one cup. And he would just basically, that's all he would wash. He had a roommate, and he, he knew I never have to do the dishes because I'll just wash my stuff and, and do that every night. I Thanks for was, sharing. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, HP is something else. <laughs> HP is the best. I think the stupidest Christmas gift is anything that's Christmas related, like any sort of uh, uh, Christmas snow globe or something. The person is opening it on the day that they, the one day they can use it. Yeah, they don't get a lot of use out of that. Anyone that happens to be any kind of snow globe, they're going to hear the next thing you're going to hear is a breaking glass. <laughs> I will throw it against the wall. Oh, some fucking idiot last year gave me an ashtray. I gave you an ashtray. And I loved it. Thank you. What about that? You know what panettone is? Like that fruit bread? It's like Italian fruit bread. Fucking starving. No, you're the only people that have that. I don't. It, it's it's the Italian version of uh, uh, of a door jam. I don't know what it's for, <laughs> but only Italian. They have it like in Italian delis. Yeah, yeah. You can only get it seasonally in Italian's places, but it's, it's and it comes in a box. It's a square fruit cake, basically. Is yeah. what it is. It's disgusting. I didn't know if that was like a big thing. Anywhere and else. I don't know if that's outside of New York either. 
I can't remember if people in Philly mm. give them out, but you'll just see boxes of them in the fucking deli right now. The Italian ladies just rotate who's giving who one. They all just pass around the neighborhood. Sick. It's a sickness. <laughs> From FBA, Ken Vanilla asks, What crazy alcoholic drinks did you drink when you were younger? I went through a tequila sunrise phase. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you about that. <laughs> mm. uh, but there are, like, uh, when you're first starting to go to bars, and for me it was like fucking teen years, you know, when I could get into bars, I would try to do a different drink every drink <laughs> instead of just sitting there. I'm picking out a drink. Next, you're like, what else you have? What's a Singapore sling? Yeah, give me one of those. And you're just, and for some reason, you'll get higher if you're if you're doing different types of alcohol. Yeah. I used to get black Russians not knowing anything about, not knowing what any of the ingredients were, just because I thought I was cool. Just to say we're black Russian? I'm, I'm wearing, I, I thought it was like dark and foreboding because yeah. I'm ordering something that had the word black in it. What about you, Hicks? I used to, uh, for some reason, mix orange juice and malt liquor and drink that. Oh, that's disgusting. I don't Ew. know. I forget why. Some kid said, you should try it. It'd be great. And I did. And I did that for about a week before I stopped. Well, remember when you were younger, too, you would, like, steal and booze from your parents. You would only take a little bit of each out of each bottle. <laughs> you would try to do the gimmick. Uh, yeah, a little here, a little there. And you and your friends would sit around standing up and getting as high as you could before you heard the fucking car pull into the driveway. And then everybody out the back door as quickly as possible. What about for you, Pitsy? I drank seven and sevens for some reason. And I just because well, I drinks. Yeah. I just I love seven up so much that I said might as well just put alcohol in it. So and I, why not have the worst whiskey with it? Yeah. <laughs> That's called a highball, Grandma. That's what you had. A highball. Now, normally, anyone would use that term as dead already. <laughs> that fucking thing died with Cagney, a seven and seven. I was very, very big with uh, my grandparents. And then my grandmother would have me uh, mix drinks for when I'd be like a little kid. And it would either be that or like a whiskey and water. And then she'd be, if you put like too much stuff, you trying to rot my teeth out? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You have to go back and put another splash of fucking whiskey in that. <laughs> she would act like the fucking some of the soda was bad for you. <laughs> She fucking hated it. There's nothing cuter than little children preparing drinks. Oh, it's adorable. It's, and it's very exciting. Yeah. Because right away, your little mind's working like I, uh, like you're running Rick's Cafe. <laughs> Here you go. And I got your napkin, a little straw with that. I always used to think I was uh, like a mad scientist. And I, I actually had like a little smock that I would wear. Uh, I'd make my grandmother's uh, whiskey sours. It's like a chemi chemistry now, set. How old were you at that age? I was I was between like eight and uh, ten, you know. That's and, how I was still. Now they would act like you were a maniac if, uh, you know, you let the kids mix drinks. Yeah. I didn't even take any sips. I was just more than happy to do it, put the little cherry that in. That was exciting. <laughs> yeah. We brought this up uh, yesterday because it's from Kathleen's blog. Very exciting when the older people are drinking. It's fantastic when so, you're kids. Just, the, the room felt love. Felt yeah. like love. That is. That's what love is. <laughs> <laughs> love is everywhere. It's alcohol. You can really feel like there. there's a... There's a shake-up in the atoms. Everything now starts to bubble and become funner and good for everybody. Then later you'll hear a crash and, you know... <laughs> Screaming. Yeah, and she's yelling at... Uh, uh, my grandfather, you and your horse. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're running that. For some reason, the ladies in my family, they would use running with, meaning he's fucking someone. Oh, he's out running with that, or you're running her. And I am like, and I'm a kid, and I'm like, running? Where the fuck are they running <laughs> all the time? She's out running with her. But I guess it meant like dogs. You know what I mean? You're running around like a fucking dog. <laughs> Great. Great. It's wonderful. <laughs> I just love that word. <sighs> From runface.net, Mob County asks, what is some stuff you are ashamed that you collected? I don't know if I ever collected anything in my life. I'm not big on stuff. I used to collect, I was always, in, I would never show this with my friends, but I always liked to collect the female action figure of whatever the series was. So the A-team action figures, I would collect Amy, and then all, I had like four or five different Princess Leias, I had She-Ra, but when my friends would come over, 
I would fucking hide those under my bed. Because, you know, you had dolls. <laughs> I No, but see, I wanted my action figure to have a complete set. I wanted, I wanted to well, have You everything. said you had four of the fucking girls. Yeah, like, like in other words, I, would, I just wanted every single Star Wars uh, that I could get. So if Princess Leia came out, if, if she had multiple versions, I needed all of them to complete my Star Wars set. But I was embarrassed. I oh, see, this is what I don't understand about collecting. Why do you care that you have a set of something? Because it's it, because you want to be in that world. What? I love Star Wars so much that I could then just look at my little action figures. But and, why wouldn't you watch the movie or think about it? There's, they weren't dolls. Why does that make you feel like Star Wars when you're looking at dolls? It reminds you of it, though. You can't always be watching the movie. You know, I can watch football, and then I can just look over to the side and look at my Yoda <sighs> stuff, and it's like... It's very comforting, and, you know, I, I'm still putting myself in the Star Wars universe. Oh, you ever a collector? Um, baseball cards, but that was pretty much it. I didn't collect dolls or anything. What age did you quit baseball cards? Um, 13. Yeah, I didn't even go that long. And I said I collected, but I just, you know, ate gum and fucking had <laughs> pack. They weren't even, like, set up or anything. I didn't have a book. It would just be a stack of cards. Because I would act like, yeah, I'm going to collect something. But it, I just... I don't believe in the tidiness of it all to be a collector. I used to uh, collect comic books a lot. I now, to so like probably about twelve or thirteen. What's the difference from having comic books stacked up in a corner like I did? Actually, that, that's what it was. I wasn't a collector. Yeah, I wasn't a collector <laughs> either. I read comic books, yeah. but I didn't act like, oh, I've got this in a sleeve and it means yeah. something to me. Why would it? Worth money, I think. That's 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 the reason I think anyone would collect anything. I, really wrong. I never looked at my stuff with monetary uh, really? value. Never. I'm sure you didn't, because you didn't even know what it was worth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I wanted to have all of those those things. I but why? Because they're special to you. You love the movie so much that you want to also have a little miniature version of those movies. But you had to figure out how many was in a set. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't mm -hmm. panic if something didn't come out. You only paid attention to the set. And the whole thing is invented. It's not real. It's not like... Oh, I'm a fucking, I'm collecting, you know, Egyptian artifacts. Right. Because then you're going out, you're finding them, you're doing something. You went to the store and bought a set of something. It felt like an accomplishment if you could get the complete set. Because they always made one piece of the set, like one action figure, really hard to find. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That's why, how false it is. It's not real. You know, when Harrison Ford is running around, he's looking for something, you know, if that's fucking reality. But when it is when when the Franklin Mint makes 15 or something and then you buy it, that's not collecting. That's not you haven't accomplished anything. But picking them up and you going know, to the store, looking, no, p picking up the action figures puts you in the same like headspace. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the set. Yeah. I understand for you it's somehow an anchor. But why would you feel accomplished mm -hmm. if you purchased everything a company has made? No matter what it is. You know cuz it's modern, it's new. You're not getting a, you know, Fabergé eggs or something. Right. I don't know. I just think because you feel like Something was put out there that I really love, and now I have each and every one of them. So I'm, and also it's probably something about the ego. You're saying I'm a better fan than other people because I've collected the entire set, and other people probably don't have it. I don't get Who it. Has enough money? Like, will have you it. feel closer to the films by having that entire set? Why can't you just buy the whole set at the same day? Why are they going to come out one at a time? I, I, I mean, wish... other products come out. Yeah, I mean, you know? I, that would make it a lot easier. I wish, yeah. I, I had You had to get, like, 15 proofs of purchase. But that's what I'm trying to say. They set up a false, yeah. you know, treasure hunt with this. It's not real. You well, know, even, it, like, with baseball cards. It would be just as easy. I like the Yankees. Buy all the Yankee cards. <laughs> they don't fucking sell it like that, though. No, they'll sell them by pack or by... You can but buy. Why? I mean, to make you buy more? To make you buy more. And, and then finally someone tipped me off. So, you know, you can just go buy the whole set for all, for all the you know quarters you were throwing away or 50 cents you were throwing away on, on top baseball cards. So, you just buy the set for like 20 bucks. It's also more magical when, you know, if you're like in baseball cards terms, you do find, you know, your favorite player from your team in a random set. And it, when you go to a toy store and you do find that random action figure that you wanted to, that you wanted for a long time, and there it is, then you really do feel like something special is happening. But it's not real, though. It's real if you're the collector. I guess from an outsider. I mean, for me, it would be real like, 
I'm trying to find this thing, you know, of Jamestown, and then you go down and you're you're digging around, and then you find it. That's real. Mm -hmm. But when you when a store puts out cards, and you keep buying shit that you don't want until you get something that you, that's fucking fake. That's like a fucking fake treasure hunt. Well, I mean, as long as it's a treasure hunt, I think it's a treasure hunt, whether it's set up by the store or not. And you you can't really buy actual artifacts unless you have like tons of money. You you, you can't buy. You can buy anything. If you don't have the, the that kind but of But to me, I think the exciting thing would be to fucking find it, not to just purchase it. I, I, I don't even understand the, you, you know, when it comes down to people who collect autographs, an autograph just is trying to be proof that you met somebody, right? Yeah. Why would you go and buy it from a fucking store so you still don't meet Jack Nicholson, <laughs> but you fucking have a piece of paper that somebody else got from Jack Nicholson? It seems insane to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it took all the fun out because I used to collect autographs, but I went out and got the autographs. I didn't go to a store and just like, hey, give me a Mickey Mantle. I went and met So Mickey you were an autograph collector? Yeah. My brother and I, we did it for uh, about two years, actually, in like the early 80s. Who were you collecting? Um, it, because we lived so close to Shea, it was almost primarily National League, so... Uh, it was like whoever was the Mets were playing in that particular weekend or a particular week. Who was the biggest name? Biggest name for me was Frank Robinson when he was a uh, manager of the San Francisco Giants. Who was the biggest one for your brother? Uh, biggest one for my brother, it was uh, all the Cardinals. He he was a big Cardinals fan, Ozzie Smith. And, uh, I would have loved to see him like little Earl just out collecting <laughs> stuff. Excuse me, mister. <laughs> Must have been hysterical. No, was, if you didn't get it, did you start crying like today? No, no, no I didn't get it. How come you're fine now? Because uh, I fucking acted nice to you because you cried? No. Now everything's okay? No, I mean, I'm just trying to... I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying. I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to try it. Just trying to hold it together, really. You're fine now. I don't... I, you know what, what's spinning around in my head? I'm just trying to not... Lose it. Why wouldn't you try that when you showed up for work? And I, Why would you wait until fucking everyone went there, there, Earl? I, I did. Stop fishing for compliments. I wasn't fishing for compliments. Why do people do that, too? Uh, last night, someone says to me, I'm boring. I'm dull. And I know they just want me to say, no. <laughs> you're fun. You're really exciting. It's low self-esteem. No, they want to fucking, they just, they're begging for a compliment. Like, that changes everything. People like to hear good things about themselves. Why don't they say that? Why don't they just say, tell me something good about me? I need it. That's great about me. Yeah. Instead of that whole running yourself, I never come up with anything that's interesting. <laughs> okay, this is my part now. You are interesting. <laughs> okay, we done? Can we all move on now? <laughs> I won't fish for compliments because I know that the person won't take my bait. <laughs> and then it'll be like, I'm really ugly. Just hear silence. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. I'll never yeah. get back to a fucking guy. A chick, I'll say, well, all right, here we go. Let's play that little game. But with a guy, fuck you. Yeah, you're right. You are dull. You are dull. Uh, Fez, what was this article you were telling me about? You read about the difference between men and women. It was uh, from the University of California, a study done there, and they were trying to see who's chattier, men or women. Women. Uh, what a fucking wasted study. They said <laughs> men talk more when it's a work situation or if a decision has to be made, a decision process is going on. But when it comes to talking about yourself, it's women hands down, talking about themselves. Yeah, but why do we even need a study for that? A man doesn't like to talk about himself. Oh, I know. It's one of those obvious studies. It's all, and that's all women do talk about is, you know, their own problems and their, own, their friends, their boyfriends. It just seems like, guys, we, we, we talk about sports and movies. Let's bring Lily in for that. We'll try to figure out what the uh, major difference is there between men and women. It almost seems like they skewed the study to say, all right, women do talk more about themselves. But here's something that men talk a lot about, too. Like they were trying to make it equal. Yeah, but I, I prefer thinking about things outside myself. What the hell do you want to be talking about yourself for? All the, you've already experienced it. Mm -hmm. Like some people, I see that they can't wait to tell what happened to them today. 
What the fuck for? You already did it. What are you talking about? Yeah, I never liked that. Um, you know, when when like you, someone asks, "How was your day? What did you do?" Good. Did, That's I, what I, like to I say. did what I did. It was good <laughs> to borrow an old thing. Good. There's nothing else to say. Lily, why are you girls always talking about yourself? Um, because we're probably really stupid yeah. and we don't like anything else other than ourselves. <laughs> I'm but, guessing that's probably. But what if it you is. really want to hold our attention, talk about your vaginas and yeah. you know Things people that matter. I fucked know. before. <laughs> now, I'm always willing to hear those stories from a woman, <laughs> but they never want to talk about that. No. Now all of a sudden you're fucking pulling teeth with them. Yeah, we want to talk about the crazy chick at work. You know, yeah. this girl. Oh my god, you have no idea what she did today and. I don't know. It's it's really different. I Bring don't know. up old molestation stories. <laughs> Those are good. But I hate hearing about people's days. You know, I'll ask just to be polite. Like, oh, how was your day? I t zone out as soon as I ask, ask that question. I don't care. All right. Out of all of us, who's most likely to talk about what they did over the weekend? Fezzes. Hmm. I don't think so. Who's least likely? Least likely would be... Ron. No, I think Ron actually would say it. I think least likely would be maybe Pitts. Huh. I, I don't know why people always want to talk about what happened. Yeah, you know what? Let me take that back. Earl would be least likely because he just doesn't communicate in any level. So he, he, you he want to get the tears you. going again? I'm telling you, there was Niagara Falls in our office. Well, guy, guy well, he's, I mean, he's a very lonely person. He probably doesn't have a lot to talk about. He actually, when he cried to... Uh, he leaned way over Robin Thray, and it looked like Jerry Cooney after he lost. Uh, you know what I mean? Just that yeah. the big man leaning over someone smaller. He's still slumped, too. Try to get a couple more going, Earl, so everyone knows I'm telling the truth. I was upset. I mean, I was just very sad and ashamed. It was something that I'm not particularly proud of either. And Your life? You know, at that particular moment, I was just not not happy at all. And Still just talk, trying to hold on. I really am. Hold on to what? Reality? Reality is just trying to feel any sense of normalcy again. and just That's reality. <laughs> yeah. Just feel like me again, and I'm not feeling like me right now. But you're abnormal. This is exactly who you are. I don't want to be ab I don't. I don't think I'm abnormal, and if I am abnormal, I don't want to be abnormal. It's too late. <laughs> he is... The African American Yogi Bear sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I consider you an American African. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Americans good. first. Why is he always bad? You always act like everything is happening. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm letting that soak in for a minute. I was like, that is actually, I kind of did that. An American African. I'm an American African. <laughs> Cause that to me that's better than African American. What if you're white and you're born in Africa? Does that make you uh, white? South Africa. African American. <laughs> that makes you a fucking diamond owner. <laughs> <laughs> makes you Ernie Els. That's the funniest thing about Africa. Uh, how many rich people there? Fifteen. Uh, they're all white. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven of them are golfers. <laughs> yeah, a lot of golfers come out of there. Yeah. I only see. I only know Ernie Els. I don't know Ernie who. Els. That reef. Uh, that Goodson guy. Isn't Charlie Theron from a? Uh... South God Africa? bless yeah. her. Yeah, it's awesome. You'd be with her, wouldn't you, Lil? Yeah, she's hot. Let's make up the list of women you'd be with. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Angelina. Yeah. Charlize Theron. Yeah. Mariah Carey. I love Mariah, Mariah Carey. Carey. I weird. love her. Really? Like crazy girl sex. Her. Mimi? Yeah, Mimi, yeah. I would. <laughs> so you, you keep a little list, huh? Yeah, I do. Mm. Just in case. What about what? Kelly Ripa? <laughs> Kelly Ripa. She's too uh, stupid. Skinny. Plus, she's gonna taste like Mexican. <laughs> That's not so bad. That's not so bad. A Mexican cock doesn't turn oh, you wait. off oh. at all. I forgot. Gwen Stefani. Mm, no. You don't dig her? Yeah, she's cute. I mean, she doesn't really do it for me. Yeah. Now, when you visualize yourself being with women, are you mm. the aggressor? Um. Yeah, I guess. I yeah. think so. I guess I would have to be. I don't know. Mm. Mm. You're going to do something at that baby fuck party, I imagine. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Those girls are really cute. If Frenchie shows up, you're going to be forced to do stuff. <laughs> She's aggressive. I wouldn't be the aggressor with her, though. Out of all of our friends, who would you be with? Um. Well, 
when I was asked this question about two months ago, I said that it would be Casey, mm-hmm. but I've since changed that. Um, wow. It would be one of the baby fuck girls, I and think. What's, what's happened? Oh, we don't like each other. So. God, don't start that. We're all getting along so no, nice. I, know. I'm, I just answered the question. Now. The baby pu- uh, fuck party is going to be next Friday, a week from tonight. That's going to be at Bar 953rd Street, 9th Avenue in Manhattan. You going, Fez? Yeah, I will be there. You going, Earl? Yeah. Dave? No, I can't. Uh, you want to, though? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, no. Uh, sounds like fun. It's going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. yeah it's going to be yeah. fun. Yeah. I'm going to stay home that night. Hey, JP, you're on Ron Fez. Hello. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, hi. I'm worried about Earl. I'm thinking that he may have, uh, like, thyroid disease. Your thyroid hurt at all, Earl? I don't... The thyroid doesn't hurt. Why are How you upset? You know? You're fucking just crying in the office. I know. And you go, no one will help me. <laughs> no one will help me. I told you, go to Bellevue. Let him shoot a fucking trank dart in your neck. <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want anything shot in my neck, and I don't, definitely don't want to go to Bellevue. Men now. love crying now. They fucking love it. Well, it's when <laughs> they just enjoy it. Uh, Rick, you're on my Fez. Hey boys, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, I got two comments. I can't believe we're having to put up with fucking week week two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey, Earl, you know why they made Astros white? Uh, because you want them to work, don't you? I didn't even hear the, the setup. <laughs> he got back to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. And that's today's <laughs> blog <laughs> gossip. And remember, we're always listening. Dan, you're on running Fez. Hey, uh, Fez is going to the party this week, and is it going to be okay to take video of him? All I'm saying is, if you want to take a picture of me, you just ask. I'd be more than happy to get a picture taken of me. I don't like to be secretly videotaped. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That was this year, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think we got any DC friends left from that fucking one run. Well, Bobo's out of the picture. We lost Bobo, Crazy Jen... I think KOP's done. There's a lot. Yeah, that was like a clean sweep there. Oh, yeah, because, ADF? uh... Huh? You said ADF? He's ADF doesn't live in D.C. He's in New York. Oh, my fault. Why would you bring that up? That was...